In news from Jamaica, the Andrew Holness administration has officially crossed the 100 days mark in office after clinching victory on February 25 following the general election. Just how much has Prime Minister Andrew Holness and his team achieved? Our reporter Tanika Thomas looks at the JLP's first 100 days in office. He came to office promising to be a transformational leader, one that would do things differently and provide prosperity for all. I am committed to you. I've committed my family to you. To give myself to you in full service. Everything that I do, I will do it for you. And on the fateful February 25, 2016 general election date, when the ballots were counted, Jamaicans gave the Jamaica Labour Party, JLP, the nod of approval, ending the JLP's years in political exile. The JLP brushed aside the People's National Party, PNP, with a slim one-seat majority, gaining 32 parliamentary seats to the PNP's 31. Even with this small margin, the win still convincingly ushered in the reign of Andrew Michael Holness. I, Andrew Michael Holness, <laughs> do solemnly, sincerely, and truly declare and affirm that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Jamaica, that I will uphold and defend the Constitution and the laws of Jamaica, and that I will conscientiously and impartially discharge my responsibility to the people of Jamaica. But there was no time for partying as the new Holness administration had to hit the ground running. Foremost on the minds of the electorate, the grand election promised to provide a tax break for those employees earning up to $1.5 million annually. The Jamaica Labour Party will remove income tax from the salaries of approximately 118,000 workers. This includes most teachers, nurses, security forces, and many public and private sector workers. You could take home as much as $18,000 more on your pay per month. But on assuming office, the JLP found out that there were scarce resources to finance its election promise. There was no gas tax as the party had hoped, and as such, the April 1 deadline for implementation of the tax policy was never met. But the party shrugged that off and Finance Minister Audley Shaw made this announcement when he opened the budget debate on May 12. And so when we presented our 10-point plan, which included 1.5, this was not just a, a political gimmick, it wasn't at all. It was something that was well grounded in research into the, 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 the situation, the feeling, the suffering of the people. We are announcing today that we are raising the personal income tax threshold to $1.5 million across the board for everyone. We will do this in two phases. By first going to a personal income tax threshold of $1,275,000. Effective July 1, 2016. And then we will phase in to a personal income tax threshold of $1.5 million effective April 1, 2017. Time will be the judge of how successful the JLP's tax policy will be. Health was another top priority for the Wholeness Administration. Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton has been kept busy as the country tries to stave off a possible outbreak of the deadly Zika virus. Meanwhile, citizens are still concerned about the high incidences of crime and violence. Security Minister Robert Montague has been talking tough, even hinting that his ministry is considering resuming capital punishment. It cannot be that persons feel comfortable to exact criminality
but do not expect to be severely punished. Persons who intend to break the law must know that the punishment will be sure, swift, and just. In that regard, I have asked the Minister of State, Senator Colonel Charles Jr., to consult with a number of agencies, including the Attorney General's Office and the Ministry of Justice, to determine if there are any legal impediments for the resumption of hanging in Jamaica. Mr. Holness says his administration will be bold in tackling crime. The narrative which we want to emerge is that we're going to be bold, that we are going to take the reasonable steps necessary to make a stepwise reduction in crime in Jamaica. Um, we don't intend to do it in a dictatorial fashion. It must be reasonable. At the end of the day, civil society, public opinion is very strong in Jamaica. The bar is high for the JLP team, and no doubt Jamaicans are eagerly awaiting all the promises the party made on the campaign trail, like removing auxiliary fees from high schools, implementing fixed election dates, and setting term limits for future prime ministers. Tanika Thomas reporting for Scene Caribbean News. And the consensus on the Jamaica Labour Party's first 100 days as government is that they're doing a good job, but there's a lot of work to be done. The parliamentary opposition says while the government started off on a good foot in one sense, it is failing miserably in other areas. They have started well in terms of from a communication, public relations perspective, but a number of the things which they promised and committed to, they have not delivered. For example, in the campaign, they are committed to an April 1 implementation of the tax plan. It is likely that the first sign of that will be at the end of July, and persons will only partially benefit. So what they committed to, they have not delivered, and worse, they committed to a tax break, which would not include additional taxes, and we have seen the imposition of $14 billion worth of taxes, which is now leading to increases in the prices of goods. We have seen chicken prices go up, cost of electricity has gone up, partially due to tax on um, heavy fuel oil. They have also taxed um, LNG, which is supposed to be a cheap alternative to oil. The rate of depreciation of the dollar is also contributing to an increase in um, the price of goods and services. So while there is some benefit that persons may get in terms of the tax break, it is likely to be negated by the increases that are taking place in the price of goods and services. Um, crime is still an area of concern. It doesn't appear as if there is a clear strategy to deal with the issue of crime, and that is something which we would like to hear and see better particulars on. Meanwhile, it's full marks for the government's plan for the tourism sector. New president of the Jamaica Hotel and Tourist Association, Omar Robinson, says the Wholeness Administration's plans for tourism are headed in the right direction. 100 days is still a, a, a short time to assess any government, be, be it the, this one or the former one. But I think they're moving in the right direction. I think with on, on the path to growth, I think if all the key players, all the key industries realize that they all have a part to play, and I think this minister has outlined some key areas which he is focused on, because for tourism to really contribute to the national economy, we need to get growth above 5%. He has outlined some of the, those key points which his ministry, along with, with partnerships with the private sector, that, that, you know, if we all consider those and how we target the niche market, Jamaica is, we have some of the best food, we have some of the best chefs in the, in the Caribbean, you know, and we need to highlight that. We haven't showcased all of that. We have not showcased, we have some of the best attractions in the Caribbean. It's how we package, how we showcase it so that we can deliver on giving our visitors a, cost, a quality customer experience and I'm sure we'll be able to achieve greater than 5%.